Hey friends, this is Malka Asad and welcome back to the channel. In this episode, I'm gonna tell you about my Step 2 CK experience of 272. I'm gonna start with the resources studying for this exam, assessment tools, and some studying strategies that can help you achieve the best score you can get. So let's get rolling. I'm gonna start by talking about the resources for preparing for the Step 2 CK exam. As you know, for every medical exam, there is a lot of books, a lot of question banks to prepare for that exam. You have to pick the resources that would save your time and get you the highest score. For those who have good medical knowledge from their school, have done uh, step one before step two, they might take different route on choosing the materials compared to applicants who have been away from their clinical uh, knowledge, they graduated a long time ago, or have not done uh, the USMLE step one exam. For me personally, when I started preparing for my step two CK, I've had medical knowledge from my medical school, I've had completed the step one exam before starting the step two CK, so I did not feel the need to go and study books. I started directly with the question bank, and in my case, it was UOLD. UOLD was extremely helpful for my purpose because it was focusing on the high yield topics and it was similar to the exam style. So whenever I wake up in the morning every day, I solve two blocks as if I was in the exam, it was timed one hour for the questions. I solve two blocks a day and afterwards I use the time uh, the rest of the day to uh, see the questions I got right, the questions I got wrong, understand the explanation under each question and even read the explanation for the wrong answers. Another resource I use and I think it was very helpful was the UOL Step 3. The Step 3 exam tested similar topics and concepts to the ones in Step 2. Uh, the question bank was not very big so it was only 1600 questions and it covers similar topics, so I did not feel that I'm learning something No, It was more different view how you can uh, answer certain questions. You don't have to study UOL Step 3 if you want to score high, especially now the questions are a lot more on the UOL Step 2. But if you had some extra time and you're not sure to use it for books or extra questions, I recommend using it for extra questions because that gives you extra practice and extra medical knowledge. I also tried the biostatistics review of UOL. It's extra questions related to biostat. I honestly did not feel that it helped a lot. So just focus on the questions that are already in the bank and you won't need that biostatistics review. One thing that I feel that helped me during my preparation for step two CK was first aid of step one. I did not review the whole book, but I kept it on the side, on the table, whenever I needed to review a concept or an idea that I already knew from my step one, I just opened the book and looked directly for that. So for those who already used first aid and are familiar with the topics there, how to find things, they can keep it on the side and if there is anything that they want to go back to, it's a great resource to have. Also Pathoma is a great resource for those who did not do step one before step two. And finally from the things I used is reviewing the, the concepts of biostats, psychiatry, behavioral science and ethics from step one. Because the concepts are the same, you'll be tested about these in step one, step two and step three. So I found reviewing these uh, questions from UOL of step one uh, or uh, first aid of step one extremely helpful in preparation for these parts of the step two. Before I discuss the assessment tools of the exam, I want to touch base on the books. So when I started preparing, I was not sure to start with the books or the question bank. So I said to myself, let me start with the question bank, identify the high yield topics and then I can prepare with the books. And after I finished the question bank, I actually went to some of these books and some of these books that are popular for step two CK preparation are Kaplan books, uh, Step Up to Medicine, Master the Boards, and there are more detailed books, for example, Harrison Davidson for general medicine, Sabiston for surgery, but I feel these are very, very extensive and are not needed for step two CK preparation. But the simple ones such as Kaplan, Master the Boards, I went to these books and I read a few pages of each book and I did not feel that the information uh, in this book is adding much to my knowledge. Maybe there is an idea here, an idea there, but I don't feel now going into the exam that knowing this extra knowledge would, would make any difference first in my uh, score. Second, even if it makes a difference, it's going to be a very, very minor difference. So my recommendation to you is to use that time from studying these books to reviewing you old one more time is better than spending on, on, on books and not have the chance to review the concepts in UOLD. Another popular book for step preparation is the first aid. I did not feel that first aid of step two is as important as the first aid of step one. So I tried reading some pages. I did not like the, 
the way information is presented. I felt that UWorld is more than enough. After you read UWorld and try these, these preparation materials, you'll see the difference. So for me, I actually used first the off step one rather than first the off step two. So briefly, if you feel that you're comfortable with the medical knowledge you have, you can understand the concepts of UWorld, start, try it. If you like it and you feel that you're understanding the concepts because this is what matters, go and continue solving questions and then come back later to books if you like. After we discuss the resources to prepare for step two CK, I want to talk about the assessment tools. The two main assessment tools are the MBMEs and UWorld self-assessment. For UWorld self-assessment, there are two. There, each one is four blocks. And for MBMEs, there are multiple MBMEs. Each is four blocks. For the exam is eight blocks. Each is one hour and there's one hour break. So if you do one self-assessment or one MBME, you would be doing four hours and the exam is nine hours. So for me to make it similar to the exam, I used to do two at the same time. So four hours plus four hours, which is eight, and I do one hour of break, I divide it between these blocks to make the, the, the mock exam similar to the real exam. Another tip when using these assessment tools is to start them early. Don't keep your MBMEs and your self-assessment to the last day of the exam. Start maybe one or two after you finish first round of UWorld, do another one after a few weeks, so you know where you stand. And also look at the questions that you got wrong. Uh, see where is the problem is it specific topic is it because you lack information about certain topics or there is uh, there is a mistake you're doing in the way to approach diagnosis or approach management so try to identify where are you getting the questions wrong and try to fix it whenever you continue studying now i want to give you a few studying strategies that can make a difference between high and low score as you know many students use the same materials you will first aid some books and yet they get different scores. Why? Because they're using different approach to studying. They, they're using different studying strategies and techniques. For me personally, studying efficiently is the key to achieving a high score. But what do I mean by studying efficiently? For me, whenever I'm studying, I try to get a good understanding of what I'm reading, but I don't focus too much on memorization. So even if I forget this, the, this information the next day or the day after, or even a week after, I don't focus on reviewing to try to retain it. So after I told you I solved the two blocks in the morning, I re review the answers, the explanation, I go to the next two blocks in the next day and so on. I never stop and say I'm going to review whole cardiology today or the whole uh, few blocks uh, that I did the last week. So with the first round, I have a good understanding of the concepts. I have an overview of most of the ideas. I'll probably remember more than 50% of the things I read. But with the second round, which is only focused on high yield topics, notes I took, I go and focus and go deeper in that. So broader view, and then I go deeper and deeper in the concepts till I feel very comfortable with both concepts, understanding, and memorization. Regarding notes, this is another extremely important point whenever you're doing any exam. Because if you take the time to write notes, it's against the idea of efficiency. Because every moment you take to write notes, you're taking that time from the revision time. So to optimize that time, you can take notes using UWorld. Now UWorld has this cool feature of a notebook in which you can take text from the question and put it in that notebook and you can highlight different colors. And my final advice for today is to chill the day before the exam. I know many students who stay up till midnight, till 1 a.m. trying to uh, study an extra paragraph or an extra topic. That will probably not increase your score. Actually, even if that you got a question from this extra paragraph you studied, the stress you caused yourself, the lack of sleep, might cause you to miss questions that you already know because you did not sleep well. You have to be very well rested. It's a long day. It's a nine hour exam. And you want to be make you want to be sure that you'll be comfortable sitting for that long hours. So in summary, start by identifying your goal, your target score, your timeline, and your study resources. If you have good medical knowledge from your medical school, you've passed step one, you can start directly with the question bank like what I did. Start with UWorld step two. If you had extra time, it's not needed, but if you had extra time, you can use UWorld of step three. You can keep first aid of step one on the side in case you needed to review some concepts that pass by while you're studying UWorld. For those who don't feel comfortable starting directly with UWorld, they can start by preparing from books such as Pathoma, uh, Master the Boards, Kaplan, 
uh, Step Up to Medicine, and there are more detailed books, but be careful because they, they will take time. And my recommendation is if you have good medical knowledge, you can just start directly with UWorld and go back to these books to see if there's any gaps that are still there in your medical knowledge. Use UWorld as a preparation tool, not as an assessment tool. And you can use other assessment tools such as MBME, UWorld Self Assessment, uh, starting early from your preparation and going forward and use them to adjust your preparation to find gaps in your knowledge and fix that whenever you're studying. My recommendations regarding studying strategies is to start by focusing on the understanding, the concepts and move forward. Don't spend too much time on one question or one idea. Just move forward and that will save you time to use at the end to review the high yield topics, the things that you forgot. Also regarding taking notes, try to use the most efficient way of taking notes. Don't take too much time writing down notes or typing them. Find an efficient way of doing that through flashcards or through the UWorld platform itself because that will save you so much time that you can use to review the ideas rather than spending it on, on writing or typing. I wish everyone best luck on their Step 2 CK preparation. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below or reach out to me on my social media platforms, Instagram or Twitter at Malka Asad or my Facebook page Malka Asad MD. If you find any value in this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so you get notified whenever I post future videos about related topics. Thank you everyone so much for watching and see you in future videos. Peace.